Could you talk good, about the floor and depth? Uh, good, good question, yeah. The, <clears throat> When you photograph these sites, you can see that many of them are sitting on either exposed bedrock or exposed granite rocks you know, on s slopes that no modern person would ever camp on. There may be uh, 18 inches of drop between one end of the lodge, the high end of the lodge, and the low end of the lodge, which is a, a slope that nobody would camp on today. So that bothered us for a long, long time until we built a wiki up and padded the wiki up with a with four or five hefty trash bags full of pine duff. This stuff right here, you can gather it up easily and you can put it into a bag or into a basket prehistorically and dump it on the ground. And in about an hour, you can create a really nice soft bed there. And the thing about this nice soft bed is that it's really easy to lose stuff in it, which is what has worked out so well for us because people lost a lot of stuff in it. But we think that the wooden superstructures held back the duff on the inside uh, of the lodge and that these were these were probably really well padded uh, nests in a way. They were, they were very nest-like. So Rich, could you show in proximity to what's what we can see now about where the original floor would be? Like maybe over by one of those rocks? The f I think by where Matt is? I think the floor probably started here where my foot is and continued across to Hallie and William's knees. And it extends from that big, this big yeah, boulder? I would say that the, the floor level when this was occupied was up here. That's my guess. Um, it's, it's hard to tell. You know, there, there have been forest fires through here. There's been a lot of erosion, but I, I'm guessing that there's a good 30 centimeters of duff that is missing from all of these now. And in some, some of the lodges that I've measured, there's 50 centimeters of duff missing because um, there are retaining walls that are that high. So I, th I think these were very soft, forgiving spaces, very comfortable spaces. And I also think that's why the, the wooden superstructures is so high on some of them, is that they were retaining a lot of duff on the, the downhill side. Rich, could you talk about how the duff would have disappeared over time through the fire? Okay. Uh, um, you know, the the duff is created by the rain of pine needles off the, the white bark pines. Um, there, has, there have been probably a couple of fires through here since the site was last occupied. The most recent fire was the Lake Louise fire in 1978, but prior to that there was another fire that killed off some of the older trees that you see here, there are white bark pines that are probably on the order of a thousand years old. They've, you know, they've been dead for 400 years and they were 600 years old when they died. So I think that uh, two fires have probably removed most of the duff and the duff that you're seeing right now is just recently accumulated since probably 1978, probably 1978. So. Uh, there was a lot of duff. It's really easy to gather up enough duff to build a bed. And uh, and once you've slept on it, you, you know why you do it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's really nice. It's, this is probably one of the more comfortable places to camp uh, in Wyoming. It's as good as a sand dune, if not better.